Hey, you clicked on my video. Appreciate it. Now be sure to like the video and subscribe to the page. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Outta My League. I'm Nick Diaz. The tidbitting season rolls on, and we got a whole lot of tidbits just now from Brian Kelly's Thursday press conference. So LSU just had a scrimmage, or not a scrimmage, but you know, their most of their scrimmage period open to the media the entire time on Thursday. Jaden Daniels had an opportunity today, a big one. He had an opportunity to, in some sense, Wally Pip Nussmeyer, because Garrett Nussmeyer was not a full go during the scrimmage portion of practice because he had tweaked his ankle the previous day. Um, he just had a, a grade one ankle, so just limited today, but he'll be back probably taking seven on seven um, reps either tomorrow or Saturday, so very, very little. He's done a really nice job. So there's no concern with Nussmeyer, but this was Jaden Daniels' moment to take control. And according to all reports, just like it was the previous days at practice, Jaden Daniels took the overwhelming majority of the first team reps because Nussmeyer was not there. So, today was practice number seven, the number that Brian Kelly put on saying that, hey, after day six or seven, we would be a good day to start determining who the quarterback reps were going to go to. And then he was asked, are we any closer to finding out who will be QB1? Not yet. No, I think that you have a very competitive situation still going on. You know, as, as we mentioned, you know, Nuss would have been in there taking, you know, first team reps as well. You know, Miles continues to, you know, Miles is as, as effective and as smart as any quarterback. No, we're not ready to kind of um, change our uh, thought process relative to who's getting what reps at this point. Interesting. So Jade Daniels got all of the first team reps with Nuss being out. And then Brian Kelly just said that, yeah, we're not any closer. And then Brian Kelly says that Nuss would have gotten most of the first team reps himself. Okay, if Jade Daniels didn't wow the coaches after this opportunity that he had today, I, I don't really know what else to say other than what I've been saying. The only thing I can add is that LSU can't keep doing this for another week. Okay, really, next week after that, you got to start making a call. Now, you don't have to determine it and, you know, all the way till the beginning of the season and shut it down. I mean, I think this thing can go all the way till week four or five, but you got to start making a call soon. But one thing I will tell you that it's a two horse race and it's very clear. Miles Brennan looks like his career at LSU is probably coming to an end. Sad to say, but it is what it is. Now, the second thing that we all care about the most was the offensive line position, particularly the center. Now, the starting offensive line today was Will Campbell, left tackle, Tremont Shorts, left guard, Garrett Dellinger, at center once again, Miles Frazier, right guard, and right tackle, Anthony Bradford. The same it was on Monday during the open portion of practice. Seems like that might be the betting favorite on the offensive line combo we'll see against Florida State because this is now a full week where that's been the starting rotation. Now, specifically that we all want to know is how is the center position going? Today I thought was a huge test. Um, He he has to call out fronts. uh, He has to direct the offensive line, and he's got to snap the football. Uh, And other than the time we got the the downpour there where – uh, I'll blame our managers for not giving them a dry football. Um, we had one bad snap. So it's continuity with the five is, is where we're needing to continue to grow. But we've got time to do it. And I think if they continue to work together, I think we're going to have a nice unit there. So if this is the offensive line combo they want to go with, then I'm happy to see that these are the majority of the reps we're going to get in the first week of fall camp as opposed to the last week of fall camp that they're coming to this conclusion early. Because offensive line is all about communication and comfort, and that only comes with getting a lot of reps. Then the third biggest concern on this team, and maybe even the biggest concern from a talent and depth perspective, is cornerback. Well, now that we're seven days into fall camp, we got everybody on campus, everybody healthy for the most part, What has Brian Kelly been thinking of that position's depth concerns? Really pleased. You know, I think it was one where I think we all didn't know what to expect. But, you know, whether it be 
uh, younger players, older players, all of them have uh, really shown uh, in camp. Um, I'll start with um, Cody Dickerson, you know, coming in, you know, really showing himself from, from McNeese State as somebody that can compete for us right away. And then. Okay, stop. Who the hell is Kobe Dickerson? I had to look it up. And Brian Kelly misspoke. It's Colby Richardson. And then I have to ask myself, okay, who the fuck is Colby Richardson? Grad transfer from McNeese State. I vaguely remember him announcing he was signing with LSU. I think he's a scholarship player, maybe? Um, But the LSU website doesn't have a bio on him. It's completely blank. I mean, they say, you know, his hometown, he's from New Orleans, and he's a grad transfer from McNeese, but... I can't really tell you anything else. I mean, the scuttlebutt is that he's shocked a lot of people at how good he actually is. Uh, Because I think they just brought him in to be a camp body, uh, a special teamer. But apparently he's doing more than that because he got a lot of first team reps today, according to the videos that I saw. And Brian Kelly is like, yeah, he's kind of really good. Okay, I'll take it. But then Brian Kelly went on. Jalen Davis Robinson, you know, a true freshman who's out there competing at a high level. And then, you know, Seven Banks is now, you know, cleared for seven on seven. And, and you know, we see what his ability is. Um, you know, we didn't have uh, Jarek Bernard Converse in the spring. Now he's out there. Makai, you know. So uh, an area where we were concerned has now begun to look like one of, of great depth. One of great depth. That makes me feel better, but what I also heard specifically was not just him saying great depth, but also the name Jalen Davis Robinson. Jalen Davis Robinson is the three-star cornerback from Texas that they signed at the last minute at the February signing day. Uh, He's a former track star. He's only been playing football for a couple of years, but he caught some attention his senior year, and uh, it was between LSU and Oregon at the last minute. Well, um, he was looked at as more of this developmental player, uh, a guy that had a lot of upside, but just getting his feet under him, playing the position and playing football. LaTerrence Welsh, who was the top cornerback in the state of Louisiana, four-star, top 150 player in the nation, he was looked at as you know the freshman that I was potentially th- thinking would step up and add some more depth. It's not. It's a grad transfer from McNeese, who I don't even know if he's on scholarship and has no biography on LSU's website, and the former track star that they signed at the last minute. Makes me feel better, th- because you have all this other talent, and those guys are surprising them. I'll take it. So that was my biggest depth concern with this team. Well, according to Brian Kelly, it's not. We'll see how that goes during the season. Now we'll get to other positions. Brian Kelly said the three biggest surprises of camp have been, one, Colby Richardson, two, Jalen Davis Robinson, and the third and maybe biggest surprise. Probably one of the biggest pleasant surprises has been, you know, Mason Taylor. Um, He's ready to help us win this year. He's going to play for us, and he's been outstanding. Mason Taylor. Now, I loved what I saw from Cole Taylor in spring at the tight end position, and I knew Mason Taylor was going to play this year because of I just don't really have a hell of a lot of other people. And also, he's a four-star prospect who came from a good high school, so I knew he would play. I knew he had potential, but he's also a true freshman coming in late. Hasn't mattered, apparently, because now he's getting into a legit starting role already in the first week of fall camp. But the good news out of all of this is that if he's a starter... Then we get to see the TV camera show his Aunt Joy Taylor jump up and down in the stands every time he scores. Moving on. Other quick notes Brian Kelly brought up. Jack Besh and Chris Hilton are still being held out for shin splints. I think it's just for uh, precaution. Uh, The punt returners, so far it's Sage Ryan, Malik Neighbors, Seven Banks, and Javen Nicholas. I had to look who up that was too. It's a freshman wide receiver from St. Aug in New Orleans. I think Chris Hilton will also be in there as well when he gets back, whenever that is. Uh, The punter, Jay Bramblett, has locked up the starting role at punter, according to Brian Kelly. He he pretty much said so much. Um, Doesn't surprise anyone. Place kicker, however, is still wide open. 
Harold Perkins uh, is now second string linebacker, but he's playing really, really well, and he'll probably get some playing time with the ones eventually. Joe Fusha, the safety who came from Arkansas, he's no longer first team safety at practice. Major Burns has taken his spot. Now, Major Burns was a starter at the beginning of last year, but mm, interesting. He played well from reports that I saw. Major Burns is looking good, which, again, more depth at the safety position that I've been trying to tell people that safety is a sneaky great spot for LSU this year. And lastly, Emory Jones, the four-star offensive lineman out of Catholic High. Right now, I think he's second string left guard from what it looks like. Uh, Jacques Doucet just posted a video of Emory Jones at practice today. Emory Jones pancaked, I mean pancaked, Jacoby and Guillory to the ground. A true freshman coming in late, pancaking Jacoby and Guillory. He's going to be a good one, y'all. And that's all the practice reports that we have now through seven days in. I'm going to get some more interviews of people who were there to come on every once in a while and give their perspective. We'll start with that later today. But we're starting to see all the things come into place with every position. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in the description link below.